Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. It is a pleasure to start my week with you every week. And uh, I trust you're finding some really great nuggets each week when we have these conversations. And today we have a special edition of Monday Morning Mojo because I have a guest with me today, my friend Kathy Flynn. Kathy is a wife, a mother, a business owner of multiple businesses, so we'll learn a little bit about that, and someone who is definitely not afraid to take a risk and put herself out there. So I'm excited to have you meet Kathy today and for her to share not only a little bit about her background, but more importantly, some, I think, words of inspiration for any of you who are thinking of trying something new or doing something big in your life. And I, I love that one of Kathy's mottos is do it scared. So um, we're gonna jump right into that conversation. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. I'm really glad that you could join me and I'm looking forward to this conversation. It's always so easy to talk to you. Um, and Thanks. I know I, yeah, and I know I just gave a, a very brief introduction, but maybe you could just start telling us a little bit about yourself and um, anything that you want to share about your background. Okay. Um, well, my name is Kathy Flynn. I am a mom of two amazing little boys, Bryce and Grayson. Um, they're keeping me very busy, yeah. but I'm learning a lot with them. I thought I knew a lot, and being their mom is teaching me more than I ever thought. Oh, yeah. Um, being a parent is a whole new adventure, right? Oh, yeah. Every day I learn something new, and man, are they smart. <laughs> they are very <laughs> smart. I don't remember being that smart when I was their age. Um um, yep, I'm married to my husband, Bryce, who's my business partner as well. We've been married for almost eight years, and um, he's my best friend, best supporter. And uh, yeah, so together we own a few businesses. We own um, two local companies, and then I partnered with a gut health company. And I feel like we're just navigating the uh, the day-to-day work-life balance craziness, but it's fun. You have to say it's fun, right? Because that's yeah. what keeps us going forward. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell myself every day, it's going to be fun. Let's just go. <laughs> so have you been an entrepreneur? Have you been your own boss for a long time? Uh, pretty much. So I think, um, I mean, of course, I had like other jobs where I worked at ShopRite. And um, when I was 17 years old, I started working at a pizzeria. And um, that's when I knew I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to own the pizzeria. I wanted to kind of just employ everybody and do everything. But I think since I was probably 21, Bryce and I ventured into our first business together. Wow, you were and, young. Yeah, 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 pretty young. So um, we were part of a franchise, which was good because working, you know, growing our first business, they had the tools and processes in place, the sure. training, different things. So it was good to kind of get our feet off the ground and meet other people that have been in it for a long time. Um, so we we learned quite a bit. We were with uh, that franchise for ten years. Oh wow, that's a long even time. Even though we were, oh yeah, even though we were our own boss, we still had an advisor, someone to answer to, different things like that. Um, so that's when we we ventured on our own and decided not to renew our franchise and and switched gears a little bit. Okay, so let me ask you a question. I have a couple questions actually that yes, just came yeah. to mind. What mm -hmm. What is the most exciting part about being your own boss, being an entrepreneur? Because I think there are a lot of people in my audience who are entrepreneurs. And uh, so uh, what what is it for you that makes it, it, it really the right fit? I think for me, there's a few things. Um, I don't like to always admit it, but I am a little controlling. <laughs> and um, I like being in control of my life and my schedule sure. and, you know, standing behind our businesses and what they mean. And, you know, I'm very much so I can't stand behind something that I don't believe in. Right. So being able to be my own boss and getting to kind of define that culture and um, kind of just help people out, that, that that's a big thing for me. Um, just time. Yeah. I know business owners, people think, you know, we do. We work. 70, 80 hours a week, but I get to be on the PTO. I get to go to my kids' sports games. I, you know, I can be the class mom or different things. So if you're willing to put the work in, there's so much benefit of just your time. Yeah. Well, that's that the thing right there. Yeah. You know, I, I have been very entrepreneurial my whole life too. Mm -hmm. And I can relate to some things you were saying about, 
just having that that feeling, um, you know, is part of the fabric of who you are, right? Just wanting yeah. to be in control of yeah. your time, about how you line up what you do with your values, right? Just just knowing that you could control that path. And um, I think the freedom, you know, that is one of the things I value as well is having, you know, mm -hmm. the freedom of time and the freedom to make choices. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we have to talk about the fact that you have to earn the right at some point, though, right? You have to put the, like you said, you have to put the work in. And sometimes the freedom and flexibility doesn't show up right away until you get your business to a certain place. Absolutely. It's not easy. And I feel like that's what a lot of people always, oh, like, you know, how can you, how can you do this? Or you own so many businesses, like, how are you at the school? Or because I've, I'm putting in the time to get to this level where I'm able to do that. There were, I mean, there were times Bryce and I worked together, lived together, and we wouldn't talk all week because we were just working 80 hours a week. You know, we, our previous business, it was seasonal too. We did a uh, commercial snow removal. So there were days where we were just out for hours and you have to put in the time you have to put in the hard work and i feel like a lot of times people don't see what it took to get to this place or right. you know people a lot of times they off. see what you're enjoying yeah. now and they don't yeah. know oh, must what be you had nice to get you don't realize what we what we did to get here the sacrifices that we made the the family time you know before that we made sacrifices not seeing each other you know sometimes not seeing our kids for a full day you know because we're working but in the end, now at this time where, you know, our, our kids are five and two with, you know, Bryce being in school, I'm able to to spend the time with him where he's really knowing it and he's valuing it. Um, but it, it's, it's it's a lot of work. It's not easy, but it's yeah. worth it. It's and worth it. If you put the time in, it's worth it. It is worth it. And you're, you're teaching your children something and you're building a legacy for them. I'd like to think, you know, I look at what my three children are doing now as adults and um, I, I would like to think that they've learned a lot of things about being driven and independent and financially secure from what they've watched me and, of course, their, their dad build. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, those are that's the payoff for some of the sacrifices. Um, when you look back and certainly your journey is is nowhere near its end. But when you look um, at what you've accomplished and you look at what you have done as an entrepreneur, what are you learning about yourself in the process? Like if you were to reflect on that, what are you learning about yourself as an entrepreneur? I think I'm more capable. I've, I mean, I've always thought, like how I leave myself to be able to do things, but there are certain things I, I would like to have done, but I never thought I could do it. And I'm just, I'm a lot stronger than I realized. I feel like um, growing up, I've always felt, a little controlled and that might be why i'm such a control freak now <laughs> <laughs> as bryce would say i don't think i'm that bad but um so i yeah i i feel like yeah maybe just the control side of it from when i was younger and now being able to kind of make my own decisions and give people opportunity to to do things that i didn't think i would be able to do i feel like i'm learning that i have more to offer than I used to, you know, used to believe or was led to believe. And I would like to give people the chances that I've been given. I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed. And um, I want to share that with other people. And realizing that I have the tools to do that is pretty special. That's awesome. Well, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the podcast today, because I think you have... Um, a lot of great things to share that will inspire other people. I mean, I'm sure someone's listening to this right now and they're going back and saying, did she say she has two small kids and she has how many businesses? How do you do it? You know, that's, I'm sure that's a question our listeners are, are asking themselves. So I'll just, I'll ask it for them. How do you do it? <laughs> What's I feel like secret? it's not easy to get to our work-life balance. That's been something we, we really work at. Um, we're getting better. I'm still learning. There's still some weeks where I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I haven't been able to see the kids. But then there's other weeks where, you know, I'm with them four days because we were able to take that vacation because we got all of our work done. So I feel like knowing that it's not always going to be the same. Some days are going to be longer than others. Some days are going to be more family time than others. I just look forward to those moments. I We time block. I know a lot of people time block their day as far as their tasks and what they have to do. Yes. We try to time block family time. Good. So, that is so important.
important because, you know, time blocking, for anyone who's not familiar with that term, by the way, I'll just jump in with that, is just, is just making an appointment with yourself to do a certain task, right? So whether it's related to your business or work or your personal time, the fact that you have blocked the time for it shows that it's a priority. And so I love when, when I hear people say that they do time block for their family time, because I time block everything from, mm -hmm. you know, a business meeting to an important task I need to accomplish, this, this conversation, whether it's a doctor's appointment, whether it's a vacation, date night, like if it's important and you want it to happen, it's got to show up on your calendar. So Absolutely. you guys are time blocking all of that as well, sounds like. Yeah, so it's important to us where, you know, I, in the beginning we didn't. We had our schedule, and from this time to this time, we would do this in personal time. And then every time, like, oh, you know what? This is important. Let's just let's just push the personal time out a little bit. Or tomorrow we'll have more personal time. Now it's it's we don't negotiate. Like, this is our time for our family, whether it's we're all eating dinner together this night. We're on Sunday mornings. Even if we have to work for this hour, it is just breakfast. We're going to finding home farms. We're going to just enjoy. It's just very important that this is non-negotiable. This is just as important as any business meeting that we have is this time with our family. And they know that too. If we say it's family time, it's family time and there's there's no distractions. That's great. How, so Kathy, how do you define work-life balance? What does that mean for you? Because I think that's a question a lot of people struggle with. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy to find balance per se. Maybe it's about creating some flow in your life. But what does it mean for you? For me, it's knowing that I can put in the time at work and still be content with the time that I have at home. It's not feeling like if I'm only working and I'm, I'm missing out on things with my family or my friends or anything like that, or my self care, you know, it's not just putting all my eggs in one basket and not leaving anything for anyone else. Yeah. I feel like, um, it's more if, if I want to work 10 hours today, you know, however it is, then tomorrow I'm going to have an extra, I'm going to sleep in a little late tomorrow with our family, or we're going to take Saturday morning off and we're going to do something. So it doesn't always have to be a hundred percent go on business. It's really making the time with your family and putting the effort in to, to be with your family and be more than just a business owner. I take a lot of pride in being a business owner and a woman business owner, mm -hmm. but I also take pride in being a mom and a wife. And I'm really good at, at both and i think it's important that we're well-rounded and i'm just as good as a mom and a wife as i am a business owner and one can't outweigh the other because it's just it's not going to work yeah you know and you touched on something else you know as a woman in business there are some unique challenges for us would you agree oh absolutely absolutely i feel like um a lot of times we're not taken as seriously especially me being a younger woman in business mm -hmm. You know, people disregard me until they hear I'm the owner of the restaurant. And it's like, oh, oh, hello, because they just don't expect it. Or, you know, my husband and I own a pest control company and everything is always, oh, your husband's business. Well, no, I'm actually 51% owner. It's, ah. it's, you know, it's, it's our business, but people just don't realize that, that we can have that level of success, that we can, you know, own and operate a business, that where you can multitask in so many ways. It's just, it's not normal yet which is crazy that it's 2023 and it's still looked at i know it's true and that we're having conversations about it and you know i find it interesting because sometimes the challenge can come i, I hate to say it but i think anyone who knows me knows i'm pretty much a straight shooter sometimes mm -hmm. the challenge about the challenge of being a woman in business comes from other women absolutely absolutely i have women that will only deal with my husband. Interesting. And it's, I don't know if it's, um, everyone's kind of fighting to, to make their mark and to, to have that power, yeah. but it, it is. Yeah. I feel like sometimes men are easier to work with, um, than other women in business at times, because I feel like it's, it's not a competition for them, whether that's good or bad, or whether they don't see us as competition, they don't see us as being on their level. I don't know. But, but sometimes it does happen. It does, you know, and I think that we have to be uh, willing to talk about it so that we can improve it, so that we can, you know, I think that only great things can come from women supporting other women in business, which was another reason why I wanted to have you on the podcast today, because, you know, I, I 
I'm blessed to have this platform and I want to use it to have great conversations and to be able to invite people like yourself on who have something to offer and, and, you know, just to shed light on, on some things, you know, and we're talking about a lot of things in today's conversation. Um, and, um, I have a few questions here that I know I wanted to ask you. So I'm just going to kind of shoot if that's okay. Absolutely. What motivates you? What is your big why? You know, for someone who started in business at a young age um, mm -hmm. and who's continuing to pioneer her way through not one but multiple businesses, what what is dri driving you? Um, I feel like a few things. Of course, there's, you know, my kids drive me, my husband drives me. I feel like if I really dig deep, though, I feel like it's the, my journey to get here. I have not had a terrible life, but I have not had an easy life. Mm. And I feel like I'm so blessed to be at this point that quitting is not an option. You know, you're not always going to get it right. But not everything's going to be perfect. But I've worked so hard to come this far that it just motivates me to keep going because you didn't work so hard for everything to just fall apart or to just let it go. And I feel like I know that what we're doing is helping people. Yes. I know that every business that I'm in, in some way, is helping someone. I'm giving, you know, people community. The I'm thread giving... that is woven in yeah. all the things that you're doing, because I'm sure someone from the outside might look at it and say, a restaurant, a pest control business. Uh, she represents, you know, health products. You know, so what? What is the common thread? I feel like the common thread for me is just community and bringing people together keeping people happy, building connections with people, everything we do, whether it's the gut health company, you know, that we're partnered with, you're making people feel good and, and, you know, feel good about themselves and bring them a community of people that may not have at the restaurant. We're, we're feeding you, we're making you happy. You know, you're connecting with family and friends, you're meeting new people. You have a place to be with other, you know, other people our pest control company, we're allowing you to sit outside with your family. We're making sure that you can sit on your deck and enjoy your deck with everyone. We're making sure that you can have a pool party for your kids and you're not having bees flying around. We're just, it's just giving people a place to just connect and be together and make memories. I love that so much. So, yeah. so what is the hardest thing <laughs> we've talked about Bryce a few times? What's the yeah. hardest thing about working with your spouse or partner? Because I'm sure you're willing to be real and say it's not roses and him. rainbows every day. <laughs> no, I, I love him to death. Uh -huh. I do. Very grateful for him. Um, but I feel like we have, uh, I'm a woman, he's a man. We're built differently. You know, I, I understand our tactics of how we maybe handle things and deal with people are a little different. Um, I kind of sit back and analyze things and I try to make a decision. Bryce is very impulsive. Um I sometimes I'm a little nicer with talking to people until I don't have, you know, until You're I need to get to that point. And Bryce is a straight shooter like yourself. And if it kind of hurts your feelings. He doesn't mean to, but it's just, it's it's got to be said. So I feel like we just have different ways of handling our business. But we've learned this and we both handle separate sides of the business now because we found our strengths and our weaknesses. And rather than the two of us trying to work on the same thing, we've separated roles and parts of the business and we try not to get in each other's lanes. I think that is so important. And um, I, so uh, every, everyone knows I'm the general manager of um, the Keller Williams Hudson Valley and Upstate Group, which is three market centers with 520 agents. We also have some other businesses too. So like you, I also am a serial entrepreneur. I I own and or operate several businesses, including an insurance company, title company, coaching <laughs> company, um, the gut health company. Yeah. <laughs> One more thing. Anyway, the point I'm getting to is I, I have a business partner and she and I have worked together for 11 years. And... Mm -hmm. um, the, the relationship started where I was more the employee, she was my boss, and then I grew into earning ownership opportunities and, and leadership opportunities. And we also approach things very differently. And, you know, there are things that we have in common that I think, you know, makes any partnership 
sustainable, right? You have to have that common ground. So we have a lot of our values are in, are in common. So the way we see the world and the way we operate the business um, or, or the principles of operating the business are the same. The way we go mm -hmm. about it is different. You know, yes. her strengths are, are in one particular side of the business, mine are in another. Um, but because we have the common ground and the, and the mutual respect and the shared vision, then that's what makes the yin and yang work. So it sounds like that's what you have with your husband, which is really fortunate because you also have to go home. I, I don't have to go home with my business partner. <laughs> we can, as much as we've become really close friends over the years, mm -hmm. we can turn it off and turn things on, right? When we need to, you have to go home with your partner. So I, if, if I can ask about that, mm -hmm. Um, if you're willing to share, what's it like to set boundaries around work and home and play and, and stuff? It's very difficult. Can it's be. very difficult. Um, we've gotten much better as the boys have gotten older. Before, it was all work. There were, was never, you know, all we talked about was work and business and what to improve. It. And now we kind of, it's almost like setting a time. All right, like we have this amount of time to talk about whatever issues happened at whatever business we're talking about at the moment. And then that's it. Just the same with our kids. If we're on a date night, we can talk about the kids and our business. And then that's it for the rest of the night. We're, it's just us. We're going to ask questions. We're just going to be who we were, you know, 15 years ago when we, when we met. Um, it, it, it is hard to turn off sometimes on vacation. You know, we still have our, our businesses to run. And although we're lucky to have wonderful teams, it's very hard not to get a phone call and it to, even if you don't answer it, you're like, Oh, it's so-and-so. And then you start talking about the business and you kind of have to like reel yourself back in and say, you know, what? I can wait. It's not an emergency. This is not, we can talk about it tomorrow at nine. You know, it doesn't have to be right before bed. It doesn't have to be during dinner. Um, but it, it's work. I mean, we're still working on it. Some days we fall back a little bit into our old routine and other days we, we do really well. Yeah. So well, I, I feel like it's a you've talked about it. Like you've, you've had conversations ahead of time. It sounds like where you say, here are the ground rules. Yeah. You know? Because it can be consuming and you, you need a break. You know, I feel like, especially too, before we bought the restaurant, um, which we own bottoms up restaurant in Slate Hill. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to come home and I would kind of vent to Bryce about my day or things that happened and he would listen. And now when he's venting to me about it, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to hear it all. Like I have my own stuff. So it's right. kind of, we understand that certain things we have to just kind of let go of and we can vent a little bit, but then we have to just move on. We don't harp on things anymore. What's been the hardest part of, of learning to uh, own and operate a restaurant? Because I, I, I'm sure that that can't be, that's kind of in its own league of its own. A restaurant yeah. is not an easy feat to take on. Did you either of you have any of that experience in, in your lives before? So no, I've been I've been in the restaurant industry. You know that was my one of my first jobs was in a restaurant. Um, okay. I went to school for business management. Bryce has owned his own businesses, but I've worked for this particular restaurant for fifteen years prior to owning it, oh. and I worked in it with the intention of buying it. So I worked my way up. Wait, so to, let me just stop you there for a second. Um, mm -hmm. With the intention of buying it because it was a conversation you have the owner, or that was just a vision you had. It's just vision. It was on my even. It's on my vision board from before we bought it. It's just something that I knew that I wanted. That I felt like it was just a part of me. And in my, I mean, we've talked about it like jokingly in the past when I was eighteen and nineteen. Like, oh, one day I'd own it. But when you're eighteen and nineteen years old, that's really not so you owning it. Manifested it. Abs absolutely. And I never believed in that. My sister was always a big manifester, and she would always say she's letting everything out into the universe and. I was just like, all right, yep, okay, Crystal. But now I'm like, oh my gosh, if you think it, like if you really put it out there, it it, it can happen, absolutely. Oh, 100%. I mean, we, that could be a whole other episode here, which probably will be. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, so let me ask you this. So so you had this vision that you were going to always own that restaurant, but you didn't connect it to I'm manifesting this, like I'm going to bring this into existence. Yeah. You just had a strong belief. And now looking back, you see you called it now into I existence. See. Yeah, absolutely. I just had a strong belief that one day I was going to own this place and I worked my way up to do that. And now looking back, I've, I've been manifesting it for 15 years and I didn't even realize it. Wow. And told you. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm happy that you see that because that's yeah. powerful. And I'm sure someone listening right now. So let me, so let, let's just jump on this. So let's say someone listening to this right now is having an aha moment and they're like, mm -hmm. oh gosh, I, ha I have this vision that I've been holding on to. I've been 
thinking about it, working towards it. What is the advice you could share with someone who's in that process right now? Maybe they didn't even realize they're in a process of manifesting. What could you share with them that would encourage or inspire them? I feel like if there's something that you want to do, you have to vision yourself in that role, in that place, buying whatever it, whatever it is. You have to really vision it. Like when I went to work every day, absolutely. You have to live it. Like I, I acted as if I were the owner. I was a 20 year old waitress and I acted as if I were the owner of the restaurant. I took pride in things. I handled things with a certain, you know, level of confidence and just respect. And I feel like if you really put yourself out there and you believe that you are, then you are, you will be. I mean, that's a very powerful concept, the concept of acting as if, right? Yeah. And it's it's interesting because I, I again, can, can relate to this as someone who's done this in her life. It's not mm-hmm. even acting because what you said was um, you really just treated it like you owned it already. And I, I, I can say I've done the same thing in my career at, at Keller Williams, which I believe is, you know, how I earned the right to be where I am today um, because you have that sense of ownership and Mm -hmm. you, you don't create, you know, a line in the sand that says, um, well, you know, I'm off the clock or this isn't my job kind of thing. Um, You take pride. It's beyond taking pride. It's really, I think it's, it's an investment of your energy. A thousand percent. Absolutely. And there are times where, you know, obviously in 15 years, things weren't always great, you know, at work, but you have your ups and downs. And there's times where I'm like, you know what, I think it's time for something new. And, you know, my husband would say, well, like, all right, so let, let's do something different. But I couldn't leave. I couldn't. I was so invested. I, you know, if you have a hard time in, in your marriage, you know, a bad day, you don't just say, all right, you know, I tried. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like, no, it, it's what you it's what you are. It becomes who you are. It's a part of you. Well, and I feel like. Okay. That says a lot about, you know, your your character, but it's it's a grit factor, right? Because I think, Absolutely. and you've touched on so many things today that I would call success principles, um, you know, acting as if, manifesting, having vision, belief, time blocking, mm-hmm. right? Uh, having a big why. So the other thing that's coming through in, in our conversation is this grit factor, you know, and I think that when we look at people who are achieving success um, at a high level, they are willing to see it through. And it's not that, um, that they don't say that there aren't challenges, that there isn't um, adversity, that there isn't times when we say, oh my gosh, I'm in over my head and I think I'm going to quit. But so we feel that, right? I think people who are high achievers, success oriented individuals, you're not immune to feeling the fear. You're not immune to feeling like, oh my gosh, I should throw out my hands and quit right now. But you just don't stay there long. You, no, have you push this through sense, it. You push through it. You're resilient, yeah. right? Because I know when we talked about you coming on the podcast, uh, mm-hmm. you had told me that one of the things you want to talk about was doing it scared, right? And mm-hmm. this is sort of in alignment with what we're talking about right now. Like you you push through and you do it even though you may not have all the answers and you do it scared. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Absolutely. I feel like that's been a big part of my journey. I do things scared, you know, I'm young. I didn't have a lot of um, leadership and mentorship. You know, I have a wonderful family, but none that were really entrepreneurs or that understood things that I wanted or even why I am the way that I am. I, you know, I'm one of five and I, I'm, I'm different. I understand that. Um, but I feel like I'm okay taking chances. I understand that failure is going to happen. Little failures are going to happen, but I always see the bigger picture. And I know that if you can push through, you're going to figure it out. Like that's just never, it's never an option to me. I never let myself get into a place like, Oh, what if this doesn't work? That's, And anything we've ever done, you just, we're going to figure it out. Like, it's not an option. We were going to get through it. We always figure it out. And I feel like even growing up, that was something with our family, with hard times or different things. Like, I was never worried because we're going to figure it out. My dad's going to figure it out. Like, it's just, there's no, like, why are we even talking about it almost? You know, like, we're just going to get it done. There's not an option. Um, But I feel like we've taken a lot of big chances and a lot of risks. And without risk, there's no reward. You know, we have 
a little story, oh, a couple of stories here, but right after um, we had our first son, he had craniosynostosis, which I knew nothing about, and he had to have skull surgery. He was undergoing a full cranial vault reconstructor, oh and it, yeah, it was awful. His first birthday was the end of October, and November was our 10-year um, end of our franchise agreement, and we had to re-sign. And we had just built this 5,400 square foot shop, made a huge investment in a, in a building. And all I could think of is my son is going to undergo surgery and I'm going to have to be with him for weeks. Like, what do we do? And Bryce and I really sat down and we said, I think we're going to not sign for to renew our franchise agreement. I think we're going to kind of take a venture off and we're going to create Flinko and we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. Wow. And it was our entire business. We literally just closed on our shop with a huge mortgage and we both looked at each other and we said, all right, let's draft up the emails and we're going to email all of our customers and let them know that this is what we're doing for our family and our life. And we literally walked wow, away. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, that's yeah. interesting. It sounds like you had, you were determined, but you were probably scared. It was terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. And we literally sat there and we said, are you sure? And I remember drafting the email and re reading it and saying, are we going to send it? And then I would take off the you know, all the emails and I'd put it back on and we finally looked at each other and said, you know, it's Friday. We're going to send it and we'll deal with the calls on Monday. And the wow. following week, our son had surgery. And honestly, it was the best thing that we ever did. We created, you know, what we like to think is going to be a legacy business for our boys. It's our, it's our name. It's in our town that, you know, the rest, it's two doors down from the restaurant. It's like all this, now that you say it, we manifested all of this without even realizing it. Our, our two businesses are literally two doors down from each other. And the town where our kids go to school and a town that my husband's grandfather helped build. Like we overlooked yeah. the park that he literally has a monument at because he helped build this from the, the ground up. I and used I used the word legacy earlier yeah. in the beginning of this um, episode and not even realizing, you know, how profound that that really is for you and your husband. Yeah, absolutely. So when I say do it scared, you, you just make it work. And listen, not everybody. And I've come to realize that, you can't expect everyone to be like you or have the same beliefs as you. Right. Not everybody is meant to be a business owner. Not everyone is meant to be a doctor. Not everyone is meant to be a restaurant owner or a teacher or a mechanic. And I feel like it's very important to understand that and to kind of meet people where they are. And it's okay if you don't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's okay if you don't want to be a business owner. It's okay if you think I'm crazy. People tell me all the time, <laughs> why, what are you doing? One more thing, you're the PTO. Another thing you and yeah. I have in common. Yeah, <laughs> I think crazy, I just, people, crazy people change the world, so it's okay. Absolutely, there's no limit. And I feel like being a business owner, you're limitless. Like you can achieve anything. And there's nothing that's going to stop you. And I feel like I'm very proud and I'm very grateful to have that mindset, to have that opportunity. And I think it's it's really great. And like you said, we're going to change the world. Yeah, I love this. Love this conversation so much. Again, I think you're just giving people so many different uh, words of wisdom and nuggets of, of information. And you said a few minutes ago that you didn't really have any uh, that you, you know, again, you gave some great accolades to your family, but you didn't really have like a, a mentor or role model to really look at to follow in the footsteps of business or leadership. So um, what what do you do for your own personal development, for your business development, leadership development? Are there, you know, books that you read or podcasts that you listen to besides Monday Morning Mojo? Uh, sure. <laughs> Um, you know what? I feel like a lot of, with one of my teams that we do um, for the Gut Health Company, we do a lot of um, podcasts and training. And I've been lucky enough to earn some trips where, you know, we got to be in front of great speakers and authors like John Maxwell. You know, we had a private session with him. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, I try, although I get a lot from books and, and different things like that, I feel like a lot of it is my own self growth and kind of looking back at where I've you know, how far I've, I've come, um, kind of just bouncing a lot of things off my husband really helps for me, mm -hmm. which is really good. Um, getting together with like-minded people and kind of just sharing ideas. That is huge, right? Where you can mastermind and get support, even if you're in different businesses or, or, or not in business, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, being able to have a group of people to bounce ideas off of, right? Absolutely. You can just say what you feel. You're not worried about anything. They understand where you're coming from. They might have done it and have a better way. They can offer you something. I think it's very important to not see everyone as competition. And I feel like 
with social media and everything else, Instagram, everyone just like, oh, look at their life or look at what they're doing or how did they get all of that in such a short time? I feel like instead of looking at it that way, you have to just kind of take what you can from them. Okay, well, maybe they can teach me something that I didn't know, or maybe I can try this way or, you know, everyone's always afraid to, to not be, you know, the best at everything. It, it's, it's okay. You have to surround yourself with smarter people than you, yes. you know, people that have the same goals. Sometimes, you know, sometimes there might be some random person that you meet that just says something that lights a fire under you or inspires you. For sure. I mean, you want, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I certainly no. don't because no. there's so much we can learn from each other. There are so much we can do to, you know, inspire thoughts for each other. And that's <laughs> where creativity is born. So um, I couldn't agree with you more. All right, last question for now. I could talk to you for hours, Kathy. Yeah, um, so much fun. Yeah, it is so much fun. So again, you're you're a wife, you're a mom, you're a, a multiple business owner. You have, you know, things that you enjoy doing. You're so we talked about a little bit about work life balance, but how do you just start your day? What does that <laughs> first hour of your day look like? Well, now during school, it's a little hectic. But we're, we're gonna... <laughs> yes, fair. Um, that is fair. So every morning before I wake everybody up, I just sit and I kind of, sometimes I pray. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I sit and think or listen to music. Um, and then I, I always get right up. I make my electrolyte drink. I sit there for a moment, plan my day out, and then I start getting the kids ready. I, I like lists. I feel like checking lists off just makes me feel accomplished, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I, I make my list for the day. I check everything off and get the kids off to bed. And then I usually start at, you know, the restaurant and then I go to Flinco and my husband and I always meet for lunch, which is a big perk. Oh, that's um, nice. So you carve out that time for each other. That's, we do. That's great. We have lunch together all the time. So you're intentional um, really about that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's important. We have very busy lives and different schedules, even though we work together. So it's important to have that time that it's just us to connect. I love that. Um, that's another lesson. That's another one yeah. to take away from this conversation. Because we both have to eat. We both have to eat. There's no <laughs> point in not yeah, doing it together. Being mindful and purposeful, right? About carving yeah. the time out because I, I'm sure it would be really easy for you both to just roll around through your day and not you know, have that time to connect. So I, I think that's so inspiring. I love that. Thank you. Um, and if I'm lucky, I get to wake up after the boys get out on the bus and I'm trying to do more self-care. I've started doing Pilates, which okay. I didn't know that I would enjoy so much because I'm not a big workout person. Um, some mornings I'll listen to a podcast or read from, uh, I have my little, my Bible, my mm -hmm my daily, daily Bible that I read a passage from, and it just kind of motivates me for the day. So, so every that. day is a little different. We didn't talk about that beforehand, um, but I, I, it's, it's always fascinating to me. I find that, again, people who are just wired for bigger, living bigger lives know that mm -hmm. it starts with themselves first. Like yeah. the first thing in the morning is some of that you time, right? And, and mm -hmm. so my first hour of the day is around reading, inspiring reading, mm -hmm. Also, I, I read from the Bible, you know, some movement of my body, stretching, yoga, you know, hydration, just things that, mm -hmm. that put you first. And, um, you know, I wasn't always that good with that. But in the last few years, I've really made that a priority. So i um, glad to hear that you are in that habit, too. Yeah, I feel like it's important all day we're worrying about everybody else. You know, you're keeping everybody else in line. You're making sure the kids are at school. You're making sure your businesses, everyone has what they need. And then the end of the day, sometimes I would go like, did I eat today? How many, like, did I have a water bottle? Yeah. And you can't, I know it's cliche, but you cannot pour from an empty cup. And if That's you right. don't put the time into yourself and you don't give your body what it needs, you're not going to be valuable to anyone. So I've, I've really started to prioritize my self-care. Kathy, thank you for joining me today. I have to say, you've inspired me and given me a lot through this conversation. So I know that others listening to it are feeling the same. And um, just uh, for anyone who might have missed it, tell us again. So you have a restaurant with your husband. It's called? Bottoms Up Restaurant in Slate Hill, New York. One of my Spring favorite places. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also own... Yep, Blinko Pest Control. So we do uh, all pest management, and that is also in Slate Hill, New York. And then finally, I partnered with a premier gut health company called Plexus. So 
We work on getting you healthy from the inside out. Awesome. So if anyone wants to learn more about you, where can they find you? Um, so on social media, so we have uh, for Bottoms Up and Flynn Co., we have our uh, Facebook page or Instagram page, which I will hopefully be able to link here with you so it would be easier. Um, and, yeah, on LinkedIn, I can also share that. But Perfect. I hope that I was able to inspire someone, and hopefully I get to make some new connections and meet new friends and oh, like-minded sure. people. Are there any new businesses in the horizon? A few we're thinking about. Not yeah. surprised, girl. Yeah. Not surprised there's a, to hear there's that. There's a few that we're thinking about. So I told Bryce, give me until next year. Okay. <laughs> let us let this get us off the ground. But yeah, we have a few things in the works. So all related to what we're currently doing. But I think that's so great. Great. Well, all right. Well, thanks again for being here with me today. This was such a great conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks again. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye.